Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Jeff and today we're going to have some fun playing magic and uh, we are going to play some Kiora Uprising. So Kiora, uh, three mana whenever a creature with power four greater inches about a fold, you draw a card. It was a sweet card. We got to see it pretty often. It was played quite a bit when it first came out. Uh, well, we also got Garuk's Uprising just recently. Uh, three mana enchantment. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, if you control a creature with power four greater, you draw a card. Creatures you control uh, have trample. And whenever a creature with power four greater enters the battlefield under control, you draw a card. So we now have ways to stack up this ability pretty, like, quite a bit. And so what we're trying to do is play a bunch of creatures with high toughness. With power four greater, Uro works great with this. Uh, Garuk's Harbinger works great with this, where, like, we didn't have the trample beforehand on Garuk's Harbinger, so we kind of lost value uh but with Garuk's uprising with uh things like zagana things like gem Razor, like all this stuff we get to play just a really busted fun deck so we're going to be drawing lots of cards we do uh have a lot of things on the top and so i wanted to make sure that we had some ramps so gilded goose feel pretty good in this one we have gem razors four of and i personally like gem, gem uh gem razor onto gilded goose over the arboreal grazer uh it just for me it, it feels a little bit better uh and then we're drawing lots of cards so joriel works really well at this deck as well where we're going to be sometimes just have a ton of cards in hand if we can just like get out uros a couple times in a turn if we get out a bunch of lands with uros and everything like that and ramp up do some big stuff uh we can actually just use joriel's ability to pump up a lot of stuff swing in for a bunch and just do some really cool stuff uh so i mean this deck can go pretty crazy and so I, i'm jumping through just all the cards here real quick uh Hydro hydrocrasis can in the early game just be a kind of small creature for us draw us a couple cards uh but really we're wanting to make this be at least a four four uh you know draw us two cards gain two life and then draw us a couple more cards with Kiora and Garuk's Uprising. Kiora also does untap uh, for us as well. We get to uh, get a little bit more ramp with Kiora, get up to our bigger stuff. Uh, again, yeah, Love Shuck Beast, just a big 5-5. Five -five bring some early game blockers. It's perfect for us. I, I'm going to three copies just because it's so consistently uh, not attacking that I want to be able to attack with it and do some good things as well. So uh, Love Struck Beast mostly there because it's a good card draw for us. Occasionally it will be attacking for us, but we're going to lean a little bit heavier onto Grooks Harbinger and Gem Razor and potentially Zagana. Uh, so yeah, Uro in the deck, it's powerful. It's a 6-6, it's a six, six, so whenever it enters the battlefield with these guys, it gets really big. It draws those cards anyway. It does all the things we're trying to do with this deck. We're just trying to draw through so much of this deck. Actually, we probably ought to bring in like Thassa's Oracle or something. Anyway, um, Gem Razor, it's powerful, it's good. It's, yeah, whatever. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't enter the battlefield onto the Guild of Goose uh, whenever we mutate onto something else. Uh, so we can't just play it as it's uh, for four crew mana cost, be a four, four, and that's fine. At the same time though, Grook's Uprising gets better if we already have a creature with power four greater onto the battlefield. And uh, Gem Razor is gonna be like the best creature to be able to do that. So we get immediate upside from Grook's Uprising. Uh, and then we have Zagana, which uh, any creature with a plus one plus one counter on it has trample. Uh, we don't really have a lot of like plus one counter uh, synergies except for Hydrocrasis, which already has Trample. Uh, so like that would be sweet if we could maybe get a bit more counter synergy with that. But it's just another four mana four four. I wanted to kind of bring in cards that we haven't seen in forever with this one. You can definitely fill this slot with something else if you're trying to rebuild this deck. Don't get stuff from Ravnica that you can avoid. And this one definitely is avoidable. But I wanted to showcase that we still have this, that you can adapt it for four. And also this becomes an eight eight Trampler, which is just busted and awesome. And so we can do some cool stuff with all the mana we get uh karuga another way to draw a bunch of cards we're playing a bunch of three cover mana costs and higher it comes down it will have trample hopefully with Grooks uprising do big things draws tons of cards and then great hinge on the top end because we just didn't have quite enough card draw in this deck this is going to be good so we're going to draw basically uh, we're hoping to get to a point where we just draw most of our deck we don't have a ton of interaction that's part of the biggest issue with this deck we'd like to have maybe a bit more interaction with it whatever but we're also trying to play big beefy creatures and so we're doing that instead uh at least for toughness on everything uh there there are bigger creatures that we could go for you know what actually you know what we need we need the um what's it called the new the new um mythic rare in green from corset 20. um i don't have it collected we're gonna add it in here elder gargroth there we go i only have one mythic rare so that's all that we are able to craft right now but we're adding this to the deck we're dropping one zagana there we go 
now this is the deck. All right, so yeah, Elder Gargarath as well. Uh, whenever it attacks or blocks, choose one. You get to create a 3-3 three, three, uh, Beast Creature token. You get to gain three life or draw a card. Uh, so this is probably the card that you bring in over Zagana, honestly, if you have them. Uh, we do have the ways to ramp up to it, which makes it more worthwhile. Anyway, we're just going to have some fun doing good stuff. And yeah, let's go ahead and jump to the gameplay, see how it does, and wish me luck. All right, this is pretty sweet hand, actually. So keep this. Um... Jorel on turn two is sweet. We get the scry. We have all the colors we want. Um, we actually, I guess, want another land, don't we? So we'll keep the land. Uh, we can get to Great Henge pretty quickly. Actually, turn four Great Henge with Left Shuck Beast. So we may not even play the one one. Oh no, that's bad. Now we might play the one one just to block that. And then get out Love Struck Beast. Because the Love Struck Beast actually blocks that pretty well. So, alright, we'll do this instead. If we get to Great Henge, we should win. If we can keep Love Struck Beast on the battlefield against this, life is grand. Yeah, so you block, don't let them don't let them get any bigger. And now we just really hope that they don't have claim to firstborn for this. <laughs> They're gonna have it. Or another creature that just kills it immediately. Oh, man. All right. Well, left shuck beast. Dang it. I feel like, man, I feel like I run up against this Rakdos deck all the stinking time, and it is my least favorite deck to play against. I absolutely hate it. Yeah, this is going to be bad. So they kill left shuck beast. They kill the Dreadhorde Butcher. Swing in. Keep O Strider. Oh they, oh, they just claimed the Firstborn as well. They had literally everything. We're going to probably just move on to another game now. Yeah, you don't have a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, Love Shucks Beast, uh, it has to be a 1-1. One, one. It can't be anything else. It's actually pretty bad. Oh, now they get to just to hold up creatures. Yeah, we're done here. They had the perfect draw. We are going to scoop. Another thing, too. We still have not won a die roll in how long? Feel the hate flow through you. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Regular plays BS. Yeah, I completely disagree with that. I, I find that I almost have more fun in free play than ranked just because you usually find it to run into different decks instead of Bant control every single game. Um, Love Struck Beast. Man, we need we need another land here to make this work. We're finally on the play. We're going to mulligan for a better hand. This is keepable. All right, so keep six. Um, I think that we drop Kiora here. We're going to go for Gurg's Uprising over the Kiora game plan. The rest of this is pretty powerful, so drop that. We do want Kiora and Gurg's Uprising, but this is fine right now. Okay, Joel Riel has the perfect two drop. All right, that's fine. Uh, we don't need to show blue just yet attack in yeah so I am playing in free play right now uh, instead of ranked um, I'm I just barely made it into diamond and I like to kind of test out a deck and make sure it's actually worth playing a little bit before we go too far into a new deck uh, well love Shuck beast is and we're playing up against the exact same deck we just played against all right, swing in, down to 18, pass the turn. Love Shook Beast is a good blocker for this. Uh, they're gonna have in the Firstborn, College and Familiar, Witch's Oven, all the good stuff, and we're gonna crack. Hey, they didn't have it. <laughs> yes. All right, before Mayhem Devil, maybe we go for this. Uh, let's see here. Trample with Love Shook Beast is actually pretty nice. Let's go ahead and go for Grook's Uprising. We could just race here a little bit. Um, 
Let's see here. No, no attacks. We'll take the Dreadhorde Butcher for a little bit. They could just kill the 1-1 one -one as well, so we can't even attack, but it's the perfect blocker for us. Yeah, so if this deck does well for a little bit uh, and we see it actually perform well, then we'll take it into ranked and see how it does. It's great it's worth being. That's cool. Every single time. Um, I think Dreadhorde Butcher is still worse if it gets big enough. We probably block here again. Uh, the Hexproof from Black does help a little bit. So yeah, I think we go ahead and block there. We take six. We get to draw here. Uh, we actually get to Uro it and then go into this because of the lands that we have and everything. So draw a few cards. Draw three, gain three, play two big creatures. Not the worst. Table Passage first. Grab green mana. All right, so... Uro. Put the forest on the battlefield. Oh my gosh, it's a cat oven deck. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Well, we are drawing cards. That's something that we, we are showing. We do potentially get an 8 8 here soon. Is it good enough here? Grook's Harbinger with Trample is pretty nice as well. That means we can block Dreadhorde Butcher. They can't target this after the fact. But if they have another claim the Firstborn, we're in so much trouble. Which they always have it. Uh, we get a pretty good turn next turn as well. Like, this is what we're trying to do. Like, once we have Grooks Uprising, we get some sweet turns. Alright, they're swinging in there. Sweet. They're gonna notice that they can't actually target the Harbinger. He's saying oops to me. Yeah, you can't. It's hexproof, man. Witch's Oven. Another Uro for life gain is nice. But we do need creatures. Uh, so... First off, um, Heart's Desire. Let's see, how much mana can we go for here? We can play this and Uro. I want the 1-1 one -one just as a, a kind of sacrifice fodder um, for this. So yeah, Love Struck Beast, draw a card. Uro, number two. Now we get to swing in with Garuk's Harbinger. Yes, there it is. We beat Rakdos Sack. Oh, I hate that deck so much. <laughs> All right, if we can beat that deck, uh, this is actually feeling decent. Let's go ahead and take it into ranked. Why not? I, honestly, they probably should have stuck around for a little bit longer. We just got them a few different times. What's up, Noma? Noah? How you doing? Welcome, welcome. Remember, everyone, too, if you're watching, uh, hit the follow button so you know when I'm live, going live later on. And also to get me up to 1,800 followers, we're pretty close. Sactos is the best. It's really fun when you're playing it. That is really true. Up against number 77, El Matador. Well, I thought we were ready to go into ranked, but uh, not with that hand. Um, not really with this hand either. We do have Grooks Harbinger on turn three, which isn't terrible. It can potentially get us a great hinge. Turn four, Krasis isn't bad either. So keep this. I think we drop one Krasis. Yeah. 
Great Henge can be really amazing or pretty bad for us. Uh, let's go for Fable Passage first, pass the turn. We'd love to find like a Gilded Goose or something here. Oh no. Oh no, this is bad. Uh oh. Cavalcade. Number 77. Is mono red? How dare he? <laughs> All right, actually, Stompy can be really good if it is mono red. If it's Cavalcade, it, they may be too quick to the ground for us here. Being on the play helps a lot, though. All right, we could have a shot here. All right, Harbinger, go, go, Harbinger, go. Man, all right. So many things get us, or they're just going for the light at the stage. I, I think we say no blocks. We go ahead and take it. All right, Annex. Do they have the cleave is the question. All right, we're gonna go Krasis X2 just for another blocker for us. Gain a little bit of life, draw a card. There's the land for the Great Henge. If we get to keep this alive for the Great Henge, it is so sweet. Sweetness abounds. If they have Ember Cleave here, then we're just screwed. Uprising is about power. Um, all right, we're just gonna chomp there basically. Kill Steamkin. If they have Ember Cleave, and if we can get to the Great Henge and find a uh, gem razor. I guess we have a shot still. So Rimrock Knight, they could still have, ah, wow. I guess we blocked pretty poorly or if they didn't have Ember Cleave there. Does Kruger actually draw us a card here? It's each other permanent. Yeah, we'll we'll go to the next game. <laughs> We're done here. We could go Grug's Uprising, Gilded Goose, gain a life. But that's fine. All right, up against cans represent. Um, on the play with Uro, we'll keep this. Scry for not that. We, this is the biggest issue with this deck is that we have a bunch of three drops uh, and a couple of two drops. All right, we will play the Joriel, hope for the land, pass the turn. We have a decent shot of hitting land here. It's actually a pretty high likelihood, I believe. Well, not quite high enough, though. All right, attack in. And pass the turn. Yeah, this is the other kind of combo that we have with the deck, is Joel at the two-drop slot does give us some early game interaction that works pretty well some of the time. So yeah, just Uro to try to fill out our deck a little bit better. And hitting lands is nice. Swing in. Down to 18, past the turn. Honestly, if Joriel goes unanswered, it gets pretty busted. If it gets answered, let me just cry. Just a little bit. I can go for Uros or Gem Razor into Uprising. And then potentially into like Great Henge. Um, I 
We'll just play out the gem razor. Pass the turn. Let's actually do some damage to their face at some point here. If we hit land to Great Henge, it's great. They have casualties or casualties of war, then we're in a lot of trouble though. Lame. Um yeah, let's go uprising. We can draw a card here. We draw so many more cards with Uro if we have this out. And that's probably how we're going to win is just getting a little bit extra value over the card draw. So if we can get like another group arising into Uro for the next turn or just go Great Henge, we can do some cool stuff. Land off the top could let us do Great Henge and Uro. Draw three. That's rude. Maybe we need to bring in like Quench or something this is into this deck as well. All right. Um, how many more of those can they have? <laughs> Let's go for Uro. Try to fit land still. No, that's not a land. Nissa. Yeah. We had a sweet start. They just, uh, they had the casualties. And extinction event. Oh, well, that's bad. It takes impressive knowledge. And we drew like all of our draw card stuff instead of the actual good stuff and all the arrows. Apparently, right, we're gonna go ahead and bring this back. Have a threat on the board. Now let's just go great hand into Garuk. Teferi is annoying, but even if they do blink, it doesn't do a ton to us. Yeah, Casualties is a very, very, very good card. It's hard to beat. We'll drop a, I guess a Great Henge has the least consistent upside. Is this another casualties? Yeah, we're done. All right. Good job, sir. You had the best card in possible. Four times in a row. That's cool. Dang it, man. We're going to be ranking down soon if I keep losing here. against Janser and turn to gem razor pretty sweet stuff keep this we could also go turn to Kiora into a gem razor that draws us a card that's actually pretty a pretty good play We did come to try to test out more like Cura type stuff rather than just Gem Razor. Uh, and then we get to untap and play another Goose. That's not a bad play. Yeah, that's that's a lot of ramp at the beginning. Growth Spiral might also be a pretty good card for this deck, but we'll see. Alright, I think we just play Harbinger. Um, oh, we don't have Questing Beast in the deck. What am I doing? Why wouldn't I have Questing Beast in this deck? Alright, go Harbinger. They have board wipe. This would be really annoying. Oh yeah, we, we definitely need to bring in questing beast into this deck uh, over the Zagana and everything like that. Man, I, I don't even know why I wasn't playing it. 
Uh, just th that's the biggest thing we're missing right now is not having any like hasty threats that we can drop under cards and just like be hit trying to draw into that kind of stuff. So we'll change that up in a smidge here. Kruga draws us a few cards. Yeah, so go Kruga. And see, this is what we're trying to do is just like extreme value town. Swing with Harbinger. Yeah, we have so many cards in hand now. We'll go Hydra Crisis as well. That's fine. Um, pass the turn. <laughs> All right, this is fun, at least. All right, opponent scoops it up. I mean, that was one nice thing. If we did find the Uprising there, we had a shot. Uh, so, I, okay. The deck is okay. Uh, let's let's add Questing Beast real quick. Um, and then we'll, we'll come back. All right, so three copies of Questing Beast. We drop uh, Zagana. We drop... Um, Karuga, and we drop, like, Karuga's good, but also meh, uh, and probably one Cura. Let's drop the other Lovestruck Beast. Oh, that's another good cheap card, though, for us that we need. Um, yeah, let's drop down one more Cura, and that's fine. Sorry, I just remember one more thing. Um, so I do like having Aether Hub here to be able to do stuff. So I found out that, okay, yeah, I did it on my other computer, but it still worked here. Uh, if you guys are trying, trying to use MTG Assistant, uh, make sure you check the detailed logs here as well so you can actually use it. Um, and then it just went away right after I did that. That's cool. It's such a finicky app. I love it. It's so good, but I feel like it goes away every other second. All right, this is keepable. Um, on the draw is a lot worse. Up against Thanon, bring it on Thanon. Lots of tap lands. Works okay with Uro, though. Um, I don't think we need more lands right now. So yeah, Fable Passage for the next turn, and Love Shuck Beast, and then Uro into Temple of Mystery. I guess we don't have to do that now. We can play this tapped. Pass the turn. To furry, I'm that dang to furry. I'll protect you. Yeah, I'm glad this deck has Questing Beast in it at least. All right, so Esper. I've not actually seen a lot of Esper controls, uh, which is probably pretty swell. There's Uprising. I'm not sure that's the best card to keep, but like that's the reason that we're playing this deck, so we're gonna keep Don't it. Worry. I got um Kaya. I'll phase through anything that's Feels Uro. Yeah, okay. But not forever. I can go Hydra Crisis for three, which is probably our best play. The only thing that actually kills to fairy. Um let's thin out our deck a smidge. Then next turn we can go Lushuk Beast and Grook Uprising just for a little bit more card draw. So X3. Only get to draw one card, but I think it has the best threat that it's gonna be harder to deal with. This doesn't actually attack. Yeah. 
yeah, honestly, playing these more janky decks in ranked uh, feels like I'm bringing a knife to a gunfight sometimes. It's fun. Nothing, nothing wrong with fun, but <laughs> yeah. The one nice thing is that we're drawing lots of cards, which means that we get to oh, do some value. The issue, though, is this Teferi is just really annoying. Uh, if they want to bounce Hydrocrasis again to our hand, we'll draw more cards. So X4 here. It's definitely bold, yeah. <laughs> I like that description. We're very bold. Shuffling me off my mortal coil. I've got time. Ooh, gem razor is pretty sweet here as well. Although it's just Hydra Crisis, so we don't actually get to do much with it. All right, so Rook's uprising, Harbinger. Um, I mean, Teferi just bounces us. That's something. We actually get to swing with gem razor for the next turn now and kill this. Again, not. That, that does anything with the crisis, but whatever. Okay, bounces there. Oh, they can kill Gilded Goose, right? I had guild business to attend to anyway. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> oh man, well, we're doing the thing we're trying to do, which was draw a bunch of cards, right? So let's just hope they don't have board wipe here. Control rail. Harbinger. Draw a card, create a coup. Um, if it is a board wipe, I think I'd rather just play Love Shuck here for the card draw. Keep a little bit more value in hand. Because we can still find a 1-1 one -one to play with it. I mean, if they don't have a board wipe here, we, we've done it well. Like, this is one of the biggest issues with playing, like, a Mono Green or a Simic Stompy deck versus these ones is that you run out of value faster than they do. But we're not going to run out of value anytime soon. Like, we're, as long as this stays on the battlefield, we're drawing lots of cards. The instant speed board wipe's going to hurt, but whatever. So they can exile the cat here. All right, bringing him off of the Kaya. I'm wondering if that is like their main win condition. Thank me later. Yeah, they still have board wipe available to them and this. Well, dang it. <laughs> okay, questing beast. I'm doing this now because, uh, okay, because we can draw a card and find good stuff like that. Board wipe's still going to be really brutal if they have it. Our mystical dispute. Uh, we do not have three mana. Yeah, that's cool. Super cool. All right, swing here. We'll see if they go ahead and phase out. Yeah, pass the turn. <laughs> oh, man. I, the only cool thing about this deck right now is that I'm so used to having like zero cards in hand by this point in a control matchup where they only have two cards right now. Yeah, they're filtering through like crazy, but they're also at some point going to start having issues with this. Gone for now. 
But, but yeah, the it. value is just Planeswalkers are busted and broken. I'm so excited for their rotation. Rotation is going to change oh, the game so much. And I'm actually pretty happy with where it's going to be. Oh, that's bad. All right, X3, which leads them to be able to do it again. If we find Questing Beast, it gets hit by Teferi. We don't. We lose the uprising. Yeah, let's just go ahead and concede. I'm, we're done. They could even just start ticking up and going at face and not have to deal with anything. So, we're done there. Yeah, Super Friends is not so fun to play against, especially with all the static effects that they gave with War of Spark. The, the War of the Spark just gave way too many good static effects. All right, up against Runic Eyes, and this is definitely a keepable hand. Turn two Uprising if we want it. I'm not sure that we do, though. Uh, turn two Gem Razor could be okay. And then Garuk Uprising for the card draw could be pretty decent. All right, no blocks, down to 17. Gem Razor onto Goose. Technically, we have a bigger creature in turn two, but we didn't get to swing with it, so they're a little bit better than us. I wish I was cool. Yeah, that's getting really big. I don't think I like that. So we're gonna go Baruch Uprising. Uh, Hydra Crisis coming in as a blocker on the next turn, uh, just to try to keep us alive a little bit. Um, yeah, this is what we got going first. I am gonna be attacking in, might as well. Uro's semi-nice. Down to 16 past the turn. I don't think they can just kill us right here, right? Yeah, They're, we're gonna go down pretty low, and then if they do have Zenith Flare, which is most likely the case, I've occasionally run up against people that don't have it, but they have had every cycler so far. Down to two. Good for you. Yeah, our only hope is to try and hope that we can block with this. We go up to three, and then we're going to try again to hit in for damage. If we can get to, like, Joriel and Uro for the next turn, create a blocker, and they still don't have Zenith Flare, then sweet. Okay, they have it. Good, good, good. Oh, yeah. All right. I think that we're done with this one. <laughs> so I should buy War of the Park Bruce's packs. Absolutely do not do that. Dare you even speak of such things. <laughs> All right. So overall, is this deck fun? When it goes off, it is amazing. It is a, such a cool, fun deck. Uh, is it consistent? No. And the biggest issue is that we have we're really heavy in three drops. Like basically. In the format right now, you need to have a bunch of two drops to really be consistent. So we could probably bring in things like Rose Spiral into this deck to be able to hit it a little bit early on. But then we also just need some interaction. So I really don't know what's the best thing to be bringing in uh, with this deck because it is built around the thing we're trying to do, which is Grooks Uprising, Cura, do some fun stuff, uh, play big beefy creatures. And every once in a while, you just get ahead of the game and you dominate. And once you get ahead, it's really hard to, to not stay ahead. Uh, but I feel like we're just a turn too late to be 
ahead every time with this deck. And so uh, it's fun. Definitely play this for fun if you can, uh, or something like it. Um, I think that Garruk's Uprising will become a lot better after War of the Spark uh, cycles. We lose a lot, we lose to Fairy, we lose all, all that kind of stuff. There is just a big trample deck that is po possible to run into as well. Uh, and so I don't know, I, I think it's fun. I think it's uh, something worth trying out when you're just playing free play and having fun, but overall, not my pick. So anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe uh, and join us on Twitch next time. The link is down in the description below for uh, those watching on YouTube. And uh, yeah, anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the next stuff.